All right, so I will call the meeting to order at 7.01. Thank you, everyone. The um, first item of agenda is to call for any, any late additions to the agenda. And I have one, I know Terry had posted up the, um, just kind of a, a snapshot of where we at financially right now, mid June, getting toward the end of the fiscal year. So Terry's gonna speak to that. And um, I guess we'll put that, sorry, Terry, to have you wait, but we'll put that at the end of the meet, at the, down at um, item, uh, item number 15, I guess. Anybody else? You, you have uh, an item agenda, an agenda item about the bridge, right? I do not. If you wanted to bring that up, we could bring it up in public concerns. Okay, I thought you said you had put it on the agenda. No, I, I said I had not, um, but sorry for that confusion, but we can still bring it up at the end. All right, so the next item, um, to approve the minutes from the June 8th, our last meeting. Everybody should see those, those are up there. So it's um, just one, um, an item five, Sarah, just I think the sentence, the very last line where it says would, I think the sentence just got a little, it, 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 it's, um, I think it's supposed to be saying something else. So it's just a, you know, typo kind of thing, not a big deal, but if you'll just take a look at that. I wasn't sure what you meant to be saying. I think it's would like. Maybe would like, yeah. Okay, anything else? Motion to approve the- yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from Thank you, motion by Tom. Any second? Is that a you, a, that a second, Andy? Second. Oh, okay, Jessica, okay. There we go. All right, any further comments, additions, changes? All in favor of approving the June 8th minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Is that an oppose or an abstention? Opposed. Opposed? Okay, so we have four in favor, one opposed. The item, car the motion carries. To item number three, uh, review the town, the timesheets for town employees, the office, listers, highway transfer station. Um, those were, are up on the drive. Um, if, I don't know if everybody had a chance to look at them. I will be heading into the office later this week to sign off on those. Um, any comments on that right now? Or if not, we can certainly, if you see something in there, hopefully everybody had a chance to look at them. Nothing right. for me. I'm sorry, Jessica? Nothing for me. Nothing, okay, yeah, great, thanks. All right, so I, so I will, um, go in and sign those and um, same everybody had a chance to look at the pay orders i know terry was working on some of the ones for this week and didn't get them quite finished so um she had mentioned she hopes to get those up there by tomorrow so i'll, I'll give a couple more days so as per our meeting back in in march um i will sign off on those but i will look forward to hearing any comments if there's anything that's out of the ordinary or looks looks odd I wasn't sure I could see the new ones. Yeah, the new ones hadn't been up, put up yet. Oh, okay. But that's what I was just saying. She didn't quite get them all done. They would be up by tomorrow, tomorrow morning. All right, so we should take a look tomorrow morning. So take okay. a look. Yep, take a look and send me back any, any concerns if there are any. Uh -huh. So on to item number five, just kind of an ongoing discussion. Um, Someday this will be over. But uh, any updates, discussions regarding town operations? Seems like we're, um, everything's kind of flowing fairly smoothly. Um, I did want to bring up, I know Dan had mentioned it. As of now, we do not have any alternate for helping at the transfer station. Um, Bill, who had been doing it, as, um, as is 
concerned about working uh, up there given the current situation, which is certainly his right. Um, so there is no backup. So just wanted to point that out there. And, and one suggestion would be to um, potentially cross train a few of the other highway or some of the other town department members. We don't obviously have a whole lot, um, but also to potentially put out uh, a, a, you know, a request for to hire somebody or to put a temporary, not temporary, but an alternate. Paul? Yeah, do we not have a list of the people who had applied for this job sometime back when we when we hired our current staff? Perhaps we could refer back to that list to see if there's someone else who would like to reapply. We can certainly do that. Yeah, I, I believe I could find that. I know um, Bill had been working out great, and I think one of the other people that was on it has moved out of town, but there could be some others on there. Any other thoughts or comments on that or any of the other operations seems like the office is is flowing and working for you know working smoothly my suggestion would be to continue as we are any anything else you want to talk about having an in-person meeting next time i would i would love to entertain that idea um and kind of what we talked about tom has said that the technology is available to have a a dual meeting, let's say. I don't know if that's what it's called, a cross-platform meeting. Hybrid. Could be they call it a hybrid. <laughs> What's that? What? Hybrid meeting. Hybrid meeting. That's the right terminology. So basically, that would that would mean that um, people that felt comfortable attending a, a in-person meeting and would take steps to be socially or physically distanced and, and probably hold it in the town hall. Um, I think there's a lot of positive aspects of being together, um, but not everybody would want to do that. So we would set it up so that we could um, have some remote access to the meeting also. Any comments on that? Do you think we do, do it at the town hall? Is that what our plan would be? Or do you think we would do it in the town office? Oh, I, I, I guess I meant to say town hall if I didn't. Um, it just allows a little bit more room to open up. I mean, spread out, open windows. Do we have the technology in the town hall to pull it off? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's internet there. That's all we need. Yeah. And bring a laptop in. A laptop and cameras. The laptop has a camera in it, yeah. So you could do it. Right. Yeah, that'll work. Well, the people who show up that don't have laptops with them. Well, we'd have one laptop. So basically, we would sit around a table, you know, six feet apart, and then we'd have a laptop pointing at us. And then anyone who wanted to get into the meeting could do that through the through Zoom. So it would work. I mean, we could do that. Yeah, I don't know if we need to make a resolution or anything on that, but I, I think we can plan on that. Okay, so we'll plan it up for the first meeting in July? Yeah, which is the 13th, I believe. Okay. Right, 13th. Everybody comfortable with that? And certainly if you're not, yeah. um, you can express that um, either now or in private. We can make arrangements to have um, you know, have people attend via Zoom. Um, and it may be just an ongoing thing that that's what we do forever. Uh, makes Greg? Yep. No, oh, you locked Greg up here for a minute. Oh, so you missed Matt? Yeah. So, you locked up for a second. My internet connection <laughs> the broadband here. You were at the point where you were speculating that this may be a permanent. Uh -huh. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, and it allows us yeah. to, to get together if we, if we need to <clears throat> feel comfortable and also allows others to join the meeting from far away or, or even if they're just aren't unable to get there or don't want to get there. Okay, so we'll, we'll plan the next meeting and certainly can take some feedback and any other comments. Here. Okay. I think it's worth a try. I think we should recognize that one uh, camera on six people that are spread appropriate distance apart. It's going to make for a lot of tiny little pinpoints on the camera. I mean, on the screen and bad and bad audio unless we're all yelling. So we. There's well, going to I, be have some a, I have a microphone. I'll bring a microphone in. So I just ordered a microphone and uh, yeah, the camera it is what it is. I mean, that's it, yeah, not much we can do about that. We may be able to look into some higher capacity cameras than what the laptops provide too and just 
I imagine there's those things out there. <clears throat> sure, there are out there that are expensive. <clears throat> Let me look into it. Let me look into it from a technology standpoint. I don't think, I don't think it's that much. I think it will be fine. I have a USB camera with a microphone built into it. You could have more yeah. than one of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. have a nice camera. I have a nice Logitech that we'll see how it goes. If, if the laptop camera doesn't work, we'll try something else. But I think we can get it to work. Yeah, we'll, we'll set up a, Tom, you and I, and maybe a, I don't know anybody who wants to help. We can set up a dummy run of just testing it someday prior to the meeting. And again, it's it's more about the audio than it is about seeing us. So right, but also the Logitech should work. I mean, that's the same technology that we use for um, video conferences, where you were showing twenty people around a conference table. So should right. be, you know, fingers crossed, should be fine. Yeah. They are they are hard to come by right now. There, there's a lot of demand for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on to the next item, uh, which was item number six, uh, review the Wyndham County Humane Society contract. Uh, that was up on the drive. Hopefully everybody had a chance to look at it. That's something that um, the town has had a, a long relationship with Wyndham County Humane Society, and that's to interact with our um, our animal control officer um, in need, when we're in need of, of having somebody hold on to a, an animal for us. So um, I will entertain a motion to sign off on that. I move. Andy, I'll second. Second, Tom. Any further discussions? One quick one. Yeah. Um, Terry, is that, the same, is that the same fee we were doing last year? The same fee, is that what you said? Yes, it looks essentially the same ones that we passed in the past, but I couldn't remember the fee. It is the same. Okay. $350, I believe. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of accepting the Humane Society contract, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All in favor, five unanimous. Thank you. And on to item number seven, a um, little more detailed contract here, but to review the Wyndham County Sheriff's contract. So basically up on the drive was a copy of last year's contract and also an amendment, which uh, basically highlighted the changes, not highlighted, but what, would basically um, provide the difference or the changes it, to it updates it updates, updates. The contract. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. so in that regard one correction it should have updated the composition of the board it did not so maybe if we want to ask the sheriff's office to include the new composition of the board right yeah that was kind of funny that it wasn't in the amendment but in the previous contract it talked about a, a side um, for the town to provide a letter designating the names and positions. So, oh, so maybe Sarah, do you know? Has have we done that in the past, where we write them a letter? You're on mute. Not, not that I'm aware of, but Terry would probably know better than I would. Yeah, I guess. I mean, we could do it either way. I mean, it definitely needs to be done. So we could write them an individual letter or add that to the addendum probably probably just to keep it all in one place that makes more sense to add it to the addendum yeah there was a small increase in fees but it seemed pretty de minimis i don't know if that was discussed at all but if i recall maybe um, terry could add this too I, I think we provide them with a budget number and they seem to work back into it um their their yeah. hourly rate did go up by a dollar an hour and then they worked that into um, and a higher overall yearly amount. Is that what happens? Yeah, they called a few weeks ago and asked what the budget amount was that was approved at town meeting. So that's where the 50,000 came from. Yeah, I mean, it was such a small increase. It was more just kind of, it's like, right. It was funny, but it's, I have no objection. It's always good to know that it's there and that someone's looking at it though. <laughs>
So any, uh, um, do I have a motion to approve the Wyndham County's contract? I'll make a so move. Andy second. makes motion, Tom second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So unanimous approval of the contract for Wyndham County Sheriff's. So on to item number eight. Um, there had been brought up some comments about um, some concerns regarding speeding in town, both on the side roads and on Route 30. And I'm not sure who else is on the meeting here, um, but if I'm assuming some of the other people in the meeting that I don't recognize um, may be here for that item. And I guess what we'll do is we'll have, um, we'll kind of change this a little bit maybe just to open this up for as a portion of public comment. Um, to, so those issues could be brought forward by anybody regarding that. Um, and then we'll we'll shut that down just so that we um, don't talk about it all night, but obviously it's, very, it's a very big concern. And then the board can talk about, um, you know, some potential action items of how we can address this. Does that make sense from the rest of the board? Greg. Yes. Could I just say one thing as uh Yeah, I'd much prefer the board start the discussion. So thank you. I, I just would like to say um, and encourage uh, as the liaison for the sheriff's department um, that, you know, we just approved the contract and some people are hesitant to call. Uh, but feel free to call the sheriff's department or the state police, which your taxes pay for anyway. And I believe I'm not speaking for the state police, but if they get enough uh, complaints or concern concerns about a certain area, they'll post up a, a directed patrol, it's called, which they may do on their own, but I got a sense it's usually from phone calls. But the sheriff's department, I, I just uh, wouldn't want the select board and Believe me, I want to hear about any, you know, problem areas or anything, but I don't think that we we should have to act every time, uh, unless it's a hot spot. We could we could call the sheriff's department and ask them to put the box up or something like that. But you know, you don't you don't have to go, like go to court or anything if you call and say, listen, such and such or so and so is speeding by my house all the time. Just don't say it was me. But anyway, um, <laughs> no. But what I don't want to get involved in is say there's a truck, a guy from town, and the select board has to approach the truck driver who may have helped save uh, Backstreet from flooding or whatever. I don't. I don't want the select board to have to become actual law enforcement uh, officers because we're not. But that, that's all I really have to say that uh, I know it's hard. It's not never a fun thing to call the police, uh, but the sheriff encourages it mm -hmm. by, by individual citizens. We're certainly willing to listen, obviously, to uh, problem areas, but you see someone flying by your house and it's the same car all the time, call the state police or the sheriff's department. That's all I really wanted to say. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, go ahead, Paul. Go, go, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that we've been talking about over the last several weeks, actually several years, is the uh, change in the traffic pattern here on uh, Pikes Falls Road and how that in the last 10 years has become more of a neighborhood than a shortcut to Stratton. And so I talked to Keith and we talked to a few other people in a discussion of options we could do to help bring people's attention to the fact that there are a lot of little kids running around, but also that the, it literally has changed. It says 25 out there, but it's uh, not well recognized. One of the things that uh, Keith and I were talking about, I had I'd asked them specifically about putting up, you know, children playing signs. And he reminded me of a conversation that uh, he had had with the state sign guy a couple of years ago who said, flat, don't put those signs up. Instead, Keith was talking in terms of something other towns have done where they've put stripes on the roads to indicate that the change from the highway into the municipal area, into the local town area, that it gets people's attention that things have changed. You're not just coming down um, 
Pikes Falls Road, for example, from Stratton, as you come around the corner, there are stripes on the road that you will notice, even if you're not paying attention to signs, and that would potentially bring the attention of the driver uh, back to the, uh, the realities of a 25 mile limit, but also to the traffic patterns of little kids who are on their bikes out there. So we're coming up, trying to come up with plans to protect the, uh, the kids in Jamaica. Now there's other kids scattered around. I know here in uh, Jamaica, I think we've added like seven or nine kids in the last, I think under the age of 11 here in the last few years. And so as the kids start riding their bikes and start moving around more, it's more of a, a problem. So the speeding, which has been chronic, has now become a lot more dangerous because there's little targets out there. So that's kind of the conversation that we've been having around that, that item. And I know uh, we've had people ask for speed bumps, which uh, this is a class two road, so that's probably not gonna happen. Some other ways we've seen people who have already put out their own signs to slow down. I'm not sure how effective that is. So the next question is, we talked about putting the speed radar gun out mm -hmm. what we had on the um, on Depot Street for a while to find out what is the problem. Is it just our imagination or in fact, is that what's happening? I do know that I've seen the sheriff parked out here on Pikes Falls a couple of times in the last few weeks. That may have had some uh, impact. It doesn't seem quite as bad this week as two weeks ago, but it's still something we should consider. We're a lot more traffic than we used to have on Pikes Falls Road. A lot of them are uh, out of state cars because I think people are living in their other homes. We ought to take, pay some attention to, uh, again, it's a class two road so between two towns and it's getting a lot of traffic and uh, it's getting dangerous now. Yeah, and in addition to that, I had a conversation with Keith too. Um, and one of the things years back, there was a stop sign coming down off of South Hill and we discussed, well, why can't there be one there again? Um, so we're, we're looking into that. Um, and I think Tom has brought up in the past, um, you know, identifying places possibly where we could move that, um, you know, Tom being the liaison last year when we had it in mm -hmm. town, and um, you know, Andy is now working with the sheriff's department about working on moving that, the radar thing around within town. I mean, we, we can request that. There's a number of other towns that do request it, so it won't necessarily be there all the time, but we can sporadically put that up. Um, and I've also initiated a conversation today with John Bennett and Chris Campany. Um, Several years back in the early 2000s, um, there was some traffic calming studies done by VTrans and how certain things that could be done along Route 30. Um, at the time, I think some of them were put into place, but maybe not every one of them because they didn't make sense at that point. But we're, we're looking at that again, too. Um, so that would address the state highways. So there's not a whole lot we as a town can do on the state highways, um, but we can certainly, you know, factor all these together. Yeah, I've looked at the signs. I've looked at purchasing the, the radar signs. It's about $9,000 to buy those. So it's, it's expensive. Um, you know, that's another option we could look at as a town and that'd be more permanent then rather than borrowing it from the sheriff's department. But, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's, it's just a cost we have to, if we that's wanted to do that. Money. Yeah, and they have the downside. And, does that, and that, does that actually work then, you know? they have a big impact when they first go in and then everybody knows they're there and they're not as easy to move around. Um, but there's, there's a lot of, lot of pieces to this, I think. And, and then, you know, I, I think every town struggles with this. So there's, there's certainly, you know, it's never going to immediately or not fully be fixed, I guess. Right. A $300 traffic ticket hurts quite a bit. If you're going 45 and come into a 25, you're going to get a whopping ticket. And I think, you know, and the, word, the word gets out when you start getting when you hear that the tickets are being written. It's a, I, I agree. I agree. A good, and, a good sting in the pocket. Yes. And where the signs where you see all the handmade signs that's south on 30 entering the town just past the firehouse. And just anecdotally, I'm hearing that, especially after hours, like when it's dark out, the speeds are really ramping up. Um, obviously it's not quite the same risk at night, but it's, there's still a risk and it's just, it's a hot spot. I, I personally, I like the idea of borrowing the sign again. Andy, I'm sure you remember when it was on Dup Depot Street. We did learn a lot about what was, what was happening on Depot Street and the speeds that people were traveling. And I just think 
Greg, to your point, if yeah, at least that's that's something we can do very easily. Um, mm -hmm. Um, at least to start, you know, getting more data. Um, and, and it just, by definition, it raises awareness because people see it. Um, so I, I, I would encourage taking that step again um, in the couple of hotspots that we've mentioned and any others that town folks from around town are interested in. Yeah, yeah. Well, good, thanks. I mean, Greg, I think- um, Greg, Amy Duffy's yeah. raised her hand. Yeah, I think a few people. Yeah, so I will I will break now into some public um, just some feedback from everybody out there. I'm sorry, who did you say, Tom? Who's on there first? Duffy. I see you, Joel. Hang on one minute. Hi, everyone. My name is Amy Duffy. Can you all hear me? We can. Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, I live on Pikes Falls Road, um, and we have three children, and they, uh, we definitely have noticed uh, a pretty bad speeding problem. Um, it's across the board as far as friends from out of state, as well as local friends. It's definitely not limited to, to anyone in particular, but I came to just share that um, in my 10 years of being here, I've noticed a Increase in traffic, certainly was happy when the 25 mile per hour sign was in place. However, I think at this point, it's not, it's not as effective as it possibly could be. So just wanted to share my experience from just spending a lot of time outside and we would love to find a way to be able to alert everyone to that we are coming into town, that they're approaching a stop sign and that um, slow, uh, to slow the pace and just to slow down, please. Super. Yep. Yeah, very. That's that's good comments. I I did hear though from a town person who lives on South Hill that they don't they don't like the idea of a stop sign at the bottom of South Hill, especially in the winter when you're coming down the hill and it's icy. It's really difficult to stop. So I just want to bring that up. When that was discussed, and we when we put that in a few years ago, the conversation was which of those two approaching uh, traffic lines was able to stop and look for the other one people can stop more easily on Pikes Falls than they can on South Hill because of the, the slippery nature of the road. The other, the other piece of it is they're coming over quickly and they spe see the sign fairly shortly before they have to hit the brakes, whereas coming down Pikes Falls Road, you've got a little bit more lead time to hit the brakes on slippery, on slippery pavement. So that, that's kind of the thinking that went into why we put the yield sign versus the stop sign in that configuration. Yeah, yeah. but there's no yield sign now, is there? I don't believe so, and, and no. the ability not to stop is not a reason to not put a stop sign in it. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just of, giving feedback, that's all. No, 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 no. I, I, and I think we could maybe, if that, does, if that is a route we take or one of the items, then make the appropriate signage going up the road to give people warning and, and paint some stripes on the road. There's, there's many pieces to a traffic calming um, design. So Joel, Joel, did you, or I'm so, so, sorry. Um, yeah, Joel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I live, you know where I live, right on the bridge on Route 30. Mm -hmm. um, and I see the traffic there all the time. And more often than not, people are going over 30, usually closer to 50. That includes uh, tandem loggers coming down the hill. That includes many, many out-of-staters, more out-of-staters than locals. And um, I have go, been going north on Route 30, car coming south on Route 30, always an out-of-stater that passes me in that corner, coming between the two cars. So that is a real serious area. I know that um, uh, Laura Molinelli lost two pets there. Um, everybody on that intersection is very concerned. There's always speeding down that road. Okay. And I know Greg and I talked a little bit. There was someone from West Townsend who brought up the idea of putting in islands, potentially coming into town, which then people have to kind of go around. So it slows, it slows the traffic down. So you put an island at, you know, at both sides of the village, and at least on Route 30, that would take, potentially take care of the problem. Yeah, and that's part of the reasoning that I brought Wyndham Regional into this, um, just from some of their design aspects of, and working with VTrans. Um, you know, those obviously, we can't just go throw something in the middle of the road, uh, nor shall right. any individual throw something in the middle of the road, but we can um, 
work on some ideas. Um, I thought it was kind of really neat that there's some, um, even a, a thread that you could have those types of things all through all the towns going down Route 30 and, and just kind of have it be a you know, sense of arrival as you come into town. It has the dual role of, of slowing people down because they're gonna look at a flower box in the middle of the road or something. Right. Those, those I, are, I mean, there's downsides to that too. Somebody's gonna run into one of them and, and then- I don't think you'll get a lot of cooperation from VTrans about putting a traffic circle. No, and that, that's some of the conversation why it's kind of an odd select board meeting where, um, you know, we're, we're, it's part of a, a, a group discussion because there is a lot of pros and cons to a lot of different things, but it is a very serious problem. So um, we're, we're, you know, looking at several different uh, items. Greg, Heather Bautel had her, her hand yes, up. Yes, Heather, hi. Okay. And then Amy Am does I, that. Can you hear me? We yep. can hear you. Okay. Um, I'd like to bring up East Jamaica. It's more like the Wild West these days, um, as far as speeding. ATVs, packs of ATVs going down the main Route 30 and then River Road doing loops basically around, uh, you know, the homes there in East Jamaica. Um, there's a couple hot rods, if that word is even a real word anymore. Um, but there are, you know, miles of burnouts on Route 30 that if you drive on that, you can see all the fire marks and it's daily in front of Chris's house. Um, and we've called the state police twice about it. Um, and they're like, okay, we'll send somebody. Um, we've talked to the cop that lives in town and I forget his name, I'm sorry. Um, but he said, well, I quit at five. So, <laughs> um, and it's always after, it's between like four and seven. Um, but we'll get a couple big trucks. Um, the four wheelers are really what's super concerning to me. There's been dirt bikes, packs of dirt bikes going by too. Um, it's just kind of, it seems like the wild west out there. And I don't think, I feel like there has been no attention paid. I know a lot of people have called from East Jamaica to the police about it. Um, but I really don't see anything happening with it. Um, so I just want to put that out there that it's happening over on the not just in the village um to, yeah that, that's you know. that's good to know and as andy had mentioned at the beginning i mean everybody should be calling the police when they do see things and so thank you for doing that and we yeah. have as part of our contract with them they they are you know responsible for basic i mean tr a lot of things but the traffic is a huge part of it and we can direct them to you know to pay attention to certain items if if we you know if we're seeing and hearing things so because they don't always see and hear things and every call should go to the sheriff's department and not to the individual not to the deputy in town i mean i know if you see them in the street and it's nice to have somebody here um, but those should all be directed into the office they get recorded they'll they'll know you know how many people are calling they can have somebody reply or respond even when you know even when our officer local officer is off duty andy, andy we can't hear you Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the ATVs on the river road, they, I know for a fact they've written some, some uh, tickets and they, uh, there were a bunch of kids. I think you're, what Heather's talking about is different, but they're watching the river road, especially. He told me that the ATVs are on their radar. There was some kids, but then there seemed to be a larger number, but it's like yeah, fishing. I, it's like fishing. I, I had a, a cop asked me. I got stopped in a pack of uh, people that were speeding, and I said, "What about all the rest of the guys?" And the guy, the cop asked me. The state cop said, "Do you ever go fishing?" And I go, "Yeah." He said, "Do you ever catch all the fish?" And he gave me a ticket. So <laughs> they're looking out there, but I really didn't have an answer for that. And it doesn't make it any less serious, but. It's like they go there and nobody's doing anything, but. <laughs> Greg Amy has her hand up again. Yeah. Um, you know, I just wanted to add to give a, to set the scene a little bit more as far as what the actual speeding looks like past my house. Now, um, I am Paul's neighbor, so we are kind of considered like the end of, of town as far as the block of houses are concerned. And oftentimes um, people really, I mean, when I say they accelerate past the four houses right here on Pikes Falls Road, I mean, by the time they get past Paul's house and they get to mine, I mean, there is a lot of speed. Now, 
we have a natural divot in uh, right at the end of our driveway that, that you can hear people hit, that I am often amazed that they don't need new shocks and struts after that kind of idea. So it's not even as if that they're just creeping along at 35, 40 miles an hour. People are really increasing speed to get up, to get up, you know, past the, the curves up ahead. So um, it's, it's just really escalating to the point where we have also lost pets. Um, we have seen, you know, skid marks in the road, like all that kind of stuff that I just think that, uh, that people are really not taking the idea that they're approaching a village seriously. And while it was great, great to see um, a police officer, the uh, Wyndham County Sheriff's were um, at the edge of the street the other day, that was certainly the first time that I saw anyone there monitoring anything. And um, it was definitely helpful when I would watch people come down, they saw him ahead, the amount of brake lights I saw after that were, were pretty impressive. So yeah, just to give you a little bit better. No, that's helpful too. Yeah, and, and again, this isn't going to be every solution to everything, but this all this feedback is getting directed back and um, we can look at some other things and, and continually pointing that out and calling the sheriff's department. Um, you know, that's what they're there for and they're moving around. So, and like Andy says, have them give a few tickets and I mean, there's going to always be somebody speeding, but we'll catch a bunch. That's great. And, I'm sorry, I, uh, Paul, I, yeah, and then I think, um, and then Joel, and then we'll try to, I mean, I think we've heard everything um, for this, but um, go ahead, Paul. I would like to think, you know, the speeding situation on Route 30, as much as that affects us, the state got to handle that, that's Route 30. But there are things we can do within the town of Jamaica that perhaps we ought to start making a, a real focused attempt at addressing this. And so I would, I, do you want to put a committee together or somebody to really work with the, uh, what we can do with, VTRANS has helped, but we're going to get some paving done before the summer's over. The stretch of um, Pikes Falls Road up this, the problem area we're talking about is going to get repaved and re-lined. And so the question of that'd be a good time to put in those horizontal lines we were talking about. But there's some things we can do as a town, things we cannot do for, for the state Route 30, but we can do for our own roads. And I, I'd like to see some maybe some movement in that direction. Now, I don't know if you want to put a committee together to, to assess all the options and bring them back. I mean, however you'd like to see that work. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. I like some of that, you know, that, that focus, um, you know, get Wyndham Regional Commission involved because I mean, they've got traffic planners on, on their staff and they can work with, with um, you, know, you know, a lot, lot of people, more, more, um, more heads will, will help this for sure. Yeah, uh, Joel. Come. Yeah, I might consider. You know, Andy said more tickets. Well, they have to be there to give tickets. So Absolutely. Maybe, maybe some more hours. Maybe some more hours on the side roads. Um, yes, it costs more money, but um, don't they bring in money? So kind of balance it a little bit. That that's a potential. I would say that's a potential. Possibly. I mean, this is set up to be paid on a monthly basis, but maybe we can you know, shift some of the months around, um, you know, when there's more people in town to have them patrol more frequently. Um, those are all things we could look at. I like the idea that, um, I don't know if we want to put together a committee on this now, or I'll, I'll certainly take suggestions from people and we can piece that together. I'd be willing to be on that. I think that it's something that needs to be done. Uh, maybe maybe some of the people who are not on the select board like to join us on that. But Andy, he's certainly got a lot of expertise with the sheriff's department. I think I think time to, is to move now. Yeah, and I, I like the idea of having a, a multi-aspect um, committee. I mean, have some citizens involved and, and keeping it small enough that we can, you know, it's workable um, and, and drawing in different parties, you know, like VTrans and Wyndham Regional and have maybe a select board member select board person, um, possibly a planning commission, possibly Joel is a, a representative to Wyndham Regional and Transportation, some citizens on there. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put that out there. If, every, if everybody wants to email me um, some ideas and we can work on putting it, unless the board wants to be more proactive and, and who's on it. Um, I'll take all kinds of suggestions. I think we'd be more productive taking that offline, but I think it's a great idea. I agree. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Um, and I feel, does everybody feel they had their chance to say? I always like to- Amy has her hand up again. I'm sorry, I, I missed is, it. No, is that is that from before? 
Oh, I sorry. Yeah, if it was, I didn't mean to. But I did okay. want to thank you all for listening. Sure. Thank you for welcome. Here. Hey, thank you for showing up and joining us. Yes. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> okay. So um, item number nine is just an update on the Rossonville Monument in the schoolhouse. Um, I see Luz here and also Jessica was working on that too. I don't know if there's any progress on that. Um, there's, it's not definitely an urgent item, but it, there's some work being done. So we figured we'd, we'd make just some quick updates on what's happening. Lou, shall I just uh, update on our conversation and next steps? Yes, that's good. Okay. So Lou, as you mentioned at the last meeting, had done a lot of pre-work where he dug through the deeds and picked out um, what is probably the lion's share of documentation around this issue. Um, he and I did uh, together sort of a back of the envelope sketch of the spot that we're talking about, its size, its potential impact, um, who the interested parties are. Indeed, there are only two. It is the, um, the ostensible current owner, which is um, a, a loose association of the descendants of the Rawson family. Um, it is it is an exception from only one deed. That's um, Susan Will. Uh, um, hold on, let me just pull out the paper. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yes, from uh, Susan from Susan uh, Wilbur Rice's uh, Susan Rice's uh, um, lot, not Wilbur Rice's lot. Um, and so the next steps are Lou and I are going to do a little field work. We're going to go out and pace it out ourselves, try to compare the current, um, um, uh, compare the, the language in the deed, which is quite old, to um, what is currently present on the site um, to try and, and get um, a relatively, you know, reasonable sense of what, what we're talking about in terms of the physical um, area. Um, and um, I'm gonna do a little further research based on, um, Lou is pulling a little bit more, he's pulling another deed for me. Um, and then what I'd like to do based on um, our Lou and my together without hiring an, a, a surveyor or anyone like that, to kind of get a, a slightly more refined back of the envelope, um, estimate of the of the size of the lot its potential tax effect and then come back to the board in two weeks with some proposed next steps potentially you know recommending potentially reaching out to um, the current owners um, to see if they would be willing to undertake a quick claim in exchange for um, a restriction uh, a, a covenant that goes with the deed um, obligating the town to maintain it um, this is uh, not uncommon in Vermont and other states. Um, so there's a few different ways that we can handle it, but um, Lou, if you agree, what we would like to do is come back to the board in two weeks with some further next steps and suggestions. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yep, th thank you. Thanks, Lou. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. Yeah, that'd be nice that we get it. I mean, if, if we're no, I mean, I think there's a lot of positive aspects to this and, and the least of them is that it kind of clears up this nuance of, of who's doing what about it and everything else like that. Agreed. Just one thing though, it'll be coming back in three weeks. Yeah. Our next Correct, meeting. you corrected me, three weeks, we have a holiday, yes. <laughs> that gives Lou and I plenty of time yes. to dig through the weeds, right? <laughs> oh good, that helps me with my anxiety of planning meetings too. <laughs> All right, so item, um, item number 10, um, review the bids and award contract for trash and recycling services for the town of Jamaica. Uh, just quickly, we had opened those sealed bids last week. Obviously one positive thing about meeting in person is you can share that a little more easily, but um, so Terry has pulled together a comparison and I think, I mean, basically looking at our last month's bill and how would it compare if each one of these contracts was in place? I mean, do you want to talk to that just a little bit, Terry? Um, that's pretty much you just said it. I used, uh, let's see, it would have been May's bill and <clears throat> all the hauling and, and the tonnage that was taken out of there for the month of May. So 
at the bottom, when you compare the two, there's not a huge difference between the two of them. Which is amazing. Not yeah. Good or bad, but just amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, a couple of things that are a little bit different here. Um, I mean, Triple T doesn't haul double hauls, but even when they're hauling singles, they're less expensive for the for the trucking. Um, their rate right. per ton is more expensive. Um, they include and do things a little bit differently for the organics, or Casella was doing those separately. Um, that is a, a little bit of a concern, at least for me, and I've talked to Dan about it too. That, so that would require that we collect organics in the recyclable bags or in some ways that we could then move them into the compactor at the when it was just prior to being hauled away, and then they would sort them out at the end down at TAM's or Triple T's facility and put them into a um, organics bin and, and then bring it to the composting facility at Wyndham Solid Waste. Um, Dan and I both have some concerns about the practicality of that, um, considering where our location of our organics are. I mean, they're quite a haul. Each one of those 60 gallon containers um, could weigh hundreds of pounds if they're full, heavy, wet, solid stuff. Um, so that, that, that's a concern. I mean, I, I just wanted to throw it out there as, as just that. Could we get, could we have smaller bags that would be more manageable? Because personally, I would rather go with Triple T, no matter what we do, if the price is the same. And if that's the only thing that's holding us back, if we could solve that somehow, I think we'd be better off with them. I, I, I won't get into detail why I think that, but... Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking that same way. They those organic bags, um, they they were they were honest with me. They said right now the only place they're doing this right now so far, and, and again this is a lot of transition with the um, with the new laws going into place in July for mandatory composting. Um, the only place they're doing it is in Townsend, and Townsend has their own truck, um, oh. so it's fairly easy to throw the bags in there right at the end. Where Dan was, you know, concerned that his compactor is pretty full. And can he put them in there? Uh, but they do have, I mean, back to your question, Andy, they do have multiple size bags. Um, I, we would have to think through a plan to say, do we provide those to all the residents and that they're a little bit more easy to maneuver and pull them out of those big 60 gallon containers and just put them into the compactor at the end of the day? Um, or, or possibly have somebody at, you know, when they're about ready to haul, they, you know, have some assistance from somebody at the road crew come up there with a truck and move them up to the compactor or, or there's several ways to slice this, I guess. I, I, I do like it too. Plus the organics go down to Wyndham Solid Waste um, District and to the compost facility there, which generates income, which reduces our solid waste fees for them. So there's- And do those 60 pound or the ones we have now, do they get full? Have Dan says, I mean, he'd no. been using two out of the four. There's- okay. Right now he's into using the third one because it's already picked up a little bit. One upside or one, I mean, positive, I suppose. Right now we're throwing a lot of sawdust in there just to kind of keep them inert, I guess, um, which fills them up maybe a little bit more quickly than norm than they would if there was just bags thrown in there. Hmm. So okay. one thing I didn't ask them was those containers belong to Tam or Casella the ones that we're using right now. So there would be a possibility to buy smaller containers that are still have wheels and can be moved around. And I didn't ask them if they supply the containers or if the town would have to buy their own containers for the organics. That was one question I didn't ask Peter at Triple T. But if we're gonna buy our own, then we could buy smaller ones. 65 gallons is a big, <laughs> it's like a right. five gallon drum. It's, so. it's a big container. Yeah, yeah that yeah. makes sense too. And, and we do have the space for more smaller, I mean, we basically have a full metal. Um, Connex. Co Connex, yeah. So. And the other thing is Triple T will do double hauls? No, they, they it, will. It just, oh, okay, they, go ahead he said to just double the price they don't give a break for doing a double haul oh, but gotcha. if we wanted two containers to go out of there at one time that's why it 
their price just doubled. So instead of 190, it was 380. Right. Okay. So the, flip, the upside is that it's even less, but also if we end up just doing one, and I know Dan sometimes juggles things just to make sure there's always two going out, and sometimes that's not always possible. Um, or cost efficient. Or right, yeah, right. One might be light. Or there's a partial there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because the recycling is the one that seems to go out of there the most. And that is cost $400 to haul that out of there. And they hauled one $400 haul with $2.80 worth of material in it. Cost us $402.80. It was like 40 pounds in the container. So Yeah. Now, I don't know. That may have been they just grabbed the container they when they went there, the too. One or, yeah. But when it's the bill just seemed okay. very high to me. Right. And it's definitely going up. I mean, there's a lot more people in town. So, Paul. Mm -hmm. Here's a question. I'm not sure I know the answer to, but you guys are more intimate this may have. My understanding is one of them is going to commingle and one is going to separate uh, cardboard from recyclables. Is that accurate? Yeah, basically, um, Triple T is charging us this, this as if they were co-mingled. They said that we could continue what we're doing now so we don't have to change our operations around. They just are providing, I mean, it's the same, I guess it's the same rate. And if for some reason we, we decided to mix them, it's not the end of the world either, which is helpful, I guess, because sometimes one of those bins fills. Well, I guess the question I, I'm leading up to is, what's the future? And this is what I'm asking you guys. It, at one time, is everything had to be separated, and the other time, and now we're talking about there some people taking them commingled. Where is this going to be in a couple of years? Are we going to revert to one or the other? Is this a temporary situation while we're playing with what to do with the with the organics? I mean, I think if we think a few years down the road, are we going to have to redo this all over again? If we've got, if we've already got a separation thing going for us, the citizenry understands that we've been doing that for a while. To go back to not caring anymore, if the if the if the mood changes in the in the recycling community or the waste management community, then we have to start all over again with retraining everybody. I'm inclined to keep it the way it is, if we if it doesn't make that much difference to the to the hauler. Yes. And that's what they, they said that we could continue having them separated um, at our facility. So we don't have to change our operations at all. All right. And that's both T and uh, Triple, Triple T. Triple T. And, and, and Casella both, and right? Casella. And Casella. Casella would continue yes. as they are right now, right. And Triple T said it didn't matter. They were, I mean, if we wanted to mix them, we could, but they would continue to take them just like they are. It's just basically two containers and it doesn't matter what's in it. Okay. I move we accept the triple T bit. I'll second that. Any further discussion? One more question. Terry, your thoughts? Do you have a thought? Yes. <laughs> Do you have a thought you'd like to share with us? <laughs> well, I mean, as I go through the numbers and every time I go through the bill, I just, it just felt like every month it, it's going higher, 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 higher. And so when I compared the two bids and used that one bill, it seemed to me that the trucking is what is going to continue to make it go higher. So Triple T's trucking is cheaper. They're a local company. We've dealt with them for many, many years. And I kind of, I mean, I would go with Triple T, but because... I think they're pretty constant in their rates, whereas I feel like Casella just kind of went from, you know, 200 to 425 in like that. Good. Whereas I think Triple T wouldn't do that. Obviously in a contract they can't anyway, but I think we've had some issues the whole time after Casella took over. So hmm. that's my two cents. Okay, any other discussion? There's a motion out there. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a quick comment. Yeah, go ahead, Blue. Um, back when, when we were uh, at, the, at the Wyndham Solid Waste District, uh, considering single stream versus dual stream, uh, that's what Paul was talking about. 
this this idea of being able to commingle them together uh, allows you to do a little bit more efficient job in transportation, and that's what Terry was talking about. If you have two containers, both of which contain uh, will accept the same material, then you can fill up one container to its max before you switch over to the new container and therefore uh, not worry about the upcoming weekend and am I going to have enough room in both containers and maybe I send a container out that's not quite full because I'm anticipating a lot of material the following weekend. So one of the advantages of commingling them together is that you can be more efficient in your trucking. Gotcha. Yep. And that makes sense. And then even if we could do that as an audible, I mean, we, we could say, okay, the cardboard's full and just, you know, on Saturday afternoon, start putting the cardboard over in the other, in the bottles. So that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. All right. So motions on the table, um, pending no further comments, um, all in favor of accepting the triple T contract, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Have unanimous. All right, so Triple T it is. And I think too that we can work with them to, I mean, we can work with them and Dan and, and getting the right size um, containers and, um, you know, we, we can get this figured out for sure. All right, thank you. Um, on to number 11, I'll call on Chris just to give a quick update on the Communication Union District. Um, I think that everything's moving forward on that. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the DV CUD holds its uh, governance board meeting uh, the third Wednesday of every month. So uh, last June 17th, last Wednesday, was this month's meeting. Uh, the first item was the treasurer's report. Uh, we have a bank account, but no money in it. And uh, we've uh, registered the uh, trade name DV, capital DV, DV little F-I-B-E-R is our trade name. So we're now DV Fiber. Um, three new members have joined the uh, CUD, uh, Wyndham, Guilford, and Brattleboro. So now we're up to 13. Uh, and it looks like the DV CUD is in fact going to become the Wyndham Region CUD. And, then, and we're even considering collaborating uh, with the Bennington CUD to become uh, a much greater region. We had a briefing from our legislative representative on the COVID re relief bills, uh, provisions for rural broadband. 800K has been set aside. Uh, it's gotta be spent by December 20th for planning efforts. Uh, it's 100K max per CUD to be administered by the Public Service Board. And she hopes it's not a reimbursement uh, based uh, grant, but but she's not uncertain about that. There's a second part to the bill, which basically provides protections for CUDs. Uh, their, their goal is to connect as many users as possible. If other uh, providers try to connect within a CUDs region, they have to give 30 days notice and provide the CUD an opportunity to write a letter of support or opposition to the public service board. We had a report from the vendor committee, by David Jones gave it. There, we've had eight vendor briefings, and unfortunately, uh, we missed four of them because they happened before we joined. But the four we heard are pretty representative. There were two consultants, two tech service firms that didn't uh, include uh, financing customer accounts, servicing customer accounts. Uh, there are four that provide a full range of service, and there are four that are open to public-private uh, partnerships. And the vendor committee is currently working on a statement of uh, visions and principles. Uh, they also discussed the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, or RDOF. Uh, this is a fund for, also for uh, rural broadband, in which there's a $16, million, a $16 billion uh, federal grant, 92 million of which will go to Vermont and 12 million of which will go to uh, CUDs. Uh, they're limited to 25% of the total cost of implementing a system and they're awarded by a reverse auction, which means the at two companies, not two cuts, two companies, 
uh, uh, based on the lowest uh, bidder. And there are three bidders in our area that we're anticipating. So uh, this is setting up a public-private partnership because uh, the uh, vendors will bring uh, the RDOF funding to the party and the CUDs bring the opportunity to uh, uh, raise uh, revenue bond funding and, uh, and thereby fund the whole project. And I think that's the way this is gonna go. Um, uh, Steve and John gave an update on the uh, WRC study. Uh, he's been working directly with the study group and they have made some changes to the original feasibility study based on the CUDS comments. As uh, I, I told you, there's going to be a webinar on the June the 24th, uh, but space is limited. So if you don't go to that, it's going to be on, it's going to be recorded and put on the Wyndham Regional Commission's uh, website so you could review it there. And um, so, uh, and then subsequent to that, the business plan is going to be due this uh, late August. Uh, there are four committees. Uh, the Finance Committee, the Vendor Committee, the Communications Committee, and I, I forget the other one. But anyhow, I volunteered for the Communications Committee. I think basically what we're going to be doing is writing press releases and that sort of thing. Uh, John and I have been batting around the uh, issue of what competitions the Starlink system might pose for a fiber network uh, for, for the area. It's been kind of dismissed by the feasibility study uh, erroneously, uh, we think. And we think this is a serious issue that ought to be brought up, ought to have a lot of attention paid to it in the business plan. So we're planning on making it an issue uh, for subsequent discussion uh, yep. by the uh, And the other item, I guess, you know, is uh, the uh, uh, public uh, broadband uh, antenna site. You guys got to decide where you want it. Okay. Can you present us with that, what we need to do for that? I mean, I guess. No, oh, all you have to do is tell me and I'll tell Rob Fish on the Public Services uh, Commission. Uh, well, maybe send, send me the details of what's inclined and so we can make a, you know. Well, uh, you know. they will install an external antenna, a Cisco router, all the licenses, and I guess connect it to the indoor uh, uh, internet connection. Uh, and uh, Paul said he thought the school was a good idea, so I. Got okay, I, I was I was mis I got I was thinking this was related to the cut, but um yeah, let's talk about that. Um, yeah, I could talk about it a little bit. I mean, when I'm going to do an update on our current up our network upgrades, and that yeah. we have some capacity there to do that. Right. So I can speak to that. I finished Thanks, the network Chris. upgrade. Thank you, Chris. Um, the network upgrade is completed at the town hall or at the town office. Uh, Chris came in and ran the wires for me last week. And then I went in Monday, last Monday and hooked up the access points. So there is now wireless at the town office. I also set, set up a guest network that works in the parking lot. So we basically have what they're trying to do um, with the public wireless. If we want to do that. Well, uh, I did already tell me, I'll tell them, forget it. Well, we that. can do that or we, I mean, like I say, we can do it at the school and we can have it at the town office. We could have it in two locations. I mean, that's, that's not to say that we need to limit that. Okay. Yeah, I think the school is great too, right? Yeah. Yeah, we never had this option before because our, our network within the office was, was, was um, I don't know what you want to call it, what the right adjective was, but it wasn't very strong. So was it, uh, yeah. now we have this ability. Um, we as a board should should decide if we want to, you know, if we want to open that up, but I mean, it's secure and everything. So as Tom said, so um, Paul, uh, comments. Yes, well, question. Um, I was following uh, Chris's discussion and somewhere we veered off into doing something else. So was, is he's uh, Chris, uh, to you, are you talking about the uh, broadband initiative or are you talking about the Wi-Fi, universal Wi-Fi initiative? And if we're back, before we divide it off into the available Wi-Fi, can we finish up with the broadband initiative first? Well, I, I finished it with the uh, uh, with the announcement that I joined their communications committee. Everything right. I said after that has to do with uh, putting up a public access uh, uh, antenna 
It's so that's my question. You're talking about putting up a public access antenna for the broadband initiative, not for the Wi-Fi. No, no, for Wi-Fi. Is it can two different things, Paul? Two different things. Two different things. I, I, I apologize. I, I I didn't help with the segue either. So, because yeah, I I got I, I wasn't sure where Chris was when we suddenly jumped into the Wi-Fi thing, which is important. It's just that I thought you were talking about something to do oh, an antenna to do with broadband, uh, fixed here local. No. Sorry, I I should have abrupt lane change without a signal. <laughs> Must use turn signals. <laughs> Greg, Joel. Joel, you'd have to Joel. unmute. Joel. You have to unmute, Joel. <laughs> How's that? How's that? Good, good. Good. Okay. Just um, uh, in line with the broadband conversation, there is a Zoom meeting on Wednesday night uh, about the feasibility study that's being conducted by the Wyndham Regional Community Development Committee. So uh, that link is available on the Wyndham Regional website. Yeah, if anybody's interested in jumping in on that. Yeah, thanks. And John. Yeah, no, I was just going to add that, uh, and this is going back to the public Wi-Fi access, it would make sense to have it at the school, primarily because you have a larger parking lot there, and you also mm -hmm. would allow those people that are um, in the Jamaica State Park uh, to let them know that they do have that option to come out of the park and use that area there. And it's also available for some of the school kids uh, in the area that may not have uh, good Wi-Fi access in their homes to come down there and be able to tap in. It's a bigger parking lot than the one at town hall so uh, or the town offices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think our initial discussion of this was that that was going to be available and an additional location. Right. That's kind of the school's decision, I guess, if, they, if they're if they able and willing and wanting, and I'm sure they would be, to open that up. Chris. Yeah, I, I talked with the principal, and she said that the, um, she doesn't have the authority, uh, but the uh, supervisory union's IT uh, director does. He's going to contact me, and if he does it in the next day or two, I'll, I'll track him down and see if they have anything to say. But uh, so if you want it at the school, that's what I'll do. I think we should do that. Yeah. I think it is a better location. I, I don't disagree that we shouldn't open ours up, but that can be a separate conversation that, um, but the school makes, makes sense as the first point. All right. Yeah. Chris, so if you could follow up with that and then get back to us, if, if that, if for some reason that falls through, which is probably not likely, but if it does, then, um, we can circle back and we have the capacity to, hook that into our network and we'll just have to make, you know, get everybody's buy-in on that. But um, the, let, the let me know too, because I, I think everything should be consistent. I mean, we should have the same public wireless at the school that we have the same SSID and the same passwords and such that we have at the town office. Just so people, it's consistent across things. Will do. Okay. Um, other technology updates. I loaded the SSL cert on the website as well as well as finishing the wireless project. So pretty much all my work is done, I hope. <laughs> yay, yay. Yeah. Thank you. So um, backups are running. We have security out there. Like I said, the wireless is done at the town hall. So, um, and we've got those new machines in the Windows 10. Everything's on Windows 10 now. So we're okay for now. As we all know, technology keeps moving. So. <laughs> but I've, I've finished up pretty much everything I planned set out to do. All right, well, great, thank you. You're welcome. So on to um, item number 13. Um, Brian was going to give a quick up like, update last week. I um, gave out some preliminary information on an idea that had come out of the Planning Commission regarding a community septic initiative. And um, Brian's here to give just an update of where that's at and, and some of their timelines and thinking so we can all be, on, be aware of what's going on. Um. So yeah, hey everyone. Uh, actually, Greg said a lot of it. Um, that you know, the Jamaica Pen Planning Commission has been moving forward with the technical initiatives as stated in, in the approved town plan, and this uh, potential for a community septic action is it came up, and it was something that we wanted to explore. And so, what, what I want to do is is in the with the goal of just communicating and make sure making sure everyone 
has all the information that we have and has a good platform to discuss and make the proper decision. Um, the Jamaica Planning Commission is preparing uh, an information package that we'll send uh, via email to each select board member. Um, and it's gonna describe, you know, the proposed action, uh, a description of the action needed, a timeline, and just everything that we have as far as where we stand with um, the, this, this potential, especially the funding side. Um, and that would be the first step is to apply for funding. And the great part is, you can apply for the funding and get the funding and then decide just not to do it. So it's, there's no commitment on that part. So um, it's just an update, look forward. Uh, I don't know an exact date, but you're gonna get something where it has, hopefully it'll have everything I know. And so it'll be a good platform that we can discuss and then move forward. Yeah, great. Thanks, Thank Brian. You. And I think Thanks, you had Brian. mentioned that, I, I may have missed it right now, but um, for our next, um, the 13th, right? Did I miss that? But that's what you're uh, it will, Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, send something out hopefully sooner rather than later with the hopes of at that July 13th having a good discussion where we can move towards making some sort of decision um, on what we want to do with the potential for funding. Super, thank you. No problem. Thanks. Yeah, so um, next item on the agenda, there was a letter and I wasn't sure, um, I haven't heard from Peter subsequent to receiving the letter, but Peter Andrus had written a letter to the select board um, requesting, um, basically, basically he, he owns a piece of property in, in Rossonville near the, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the book, Millbrook, um, that comes down out of, um, you know, crosses under Route 100. Uh, there's a town trail in there. Um, and he owns a piece of property in there where there was some a, a number of tires that were dumped in there years ago in the right of way and on the edges of the of the town trail and the road in there and he had picked those up he had asked me if there was a way that the select board could approve or have him be reimbursed or pay for those and i said this had to be taken up by the board um there's some pros and cons to obviously we're glad that they're gone um uh, but but that was that was the I don't know if the letter is here anywhere to read but um that was kind of it was it's a fairly short letter um, but that was I the, have it if you need it yeah do you mind reading it Andy just so that you oh, get his his, no, his perspective you ready yep on uh, July June seventh twenty twenty Jamaica Select Board I removed sixteen tires from the white of right of way of Jamaica Town Road number 62 in Rossonville. I wondered if the town of Jamaica would be willing to reimburse me for the disposal cost of $92, which I paid at the transfer station. Peter Andrus, his address and phone number. So thank you, yeah. So I don't know, anybody, any thoughts or comments on that? Uh, so just what is, for those of us who don't know what the right of way is. So, uh, so there's a there's a town road, it's an old town road. It's a class four road, I believe. It's where the original, probably route 100 used to go. Um, there's bridge abutments in there and there's access where people a lot of times will drive in there and, and numerous times throw trash in there and, and maybe go for a hike or play in the water or something. So Peter owns a small piece of property that's kind of encircled by the road there. Um, and he had gone in and, and somebody had dumped tires in there and he had cleaned them up. The town owns that right of way? Is that? That's confusing. I no, the, it's ta the town the, road. It is a town road. It's a class three road. It's not a trail. Okay. But okay. the town, the town has a right of way, usually a three rod right of way on a class three road which is approximately 15 feet from the center line of the road and then off the side of the road right. so we don't own the property the property owner still has it we just have the right to maintain if we need to go off the side of the road and who's the property you know, like, owner? is it peter andrus yeah peter andrus mm -hmm. i i I looked into uh, 
purchasing that property, kind of. It's under contract right now, if that makes any difference. And the yeah, town? I, mean, I, I think it's a wonderful thing um, that it's cleaned up. I have some problem with, with saying that each individual can go in and clear up stuff. Um, may have been a little bit different if it was he had come forward first. I mean, I, I don't want to use that as the reasoning. Um, it kind of, I mean, I'd like to easily say, I mean, $100 is $100. Who, you know, it's not really that much, and it's a whole lot of stuff that's cleaned up in there. Um, and, but I don't know where we go if we start saying we're going to just start for people cleaning up along the sides of the roads. I can speak that if you remember back a year ago or so when all that stuff was up and where most market was, um, we decided not to do any, not to act on that. Mm -hmm. We left it there, and I ended up going and picking it up and taking it to dump myself. But um, the town itself did not want to act on that, just because we didn't want to set the precedent that we would be, you know, hauling private owners' trash. Kind of a touchy situation, as Peter, uh, he does quite a bit for the town. Not that that matters, but he's he does the town, He's also the town agent. He does mow the strip of land here. That the, he does mow that strip on Water Street. He doesn't ask for any compensation yeah. for that. But I, I should stay out of it because I sometimes work for him and we're sort of friendly. And uh, I, I guess I probably will abstain from the rest of this conversation. Chris, comments. I'll, I'll take other comments. We're gonna we're kind of stalemated here. <laughs> We, say, we don't have to act on it now. No. Did you say the cost, uh, he's, uh, the compensation he's looking for is the transfer fee that he had to pay? Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, they're charging him to dispose of town waste. That doesn't seem fair. I can say when I brought that stuff from Moe's, I didn't get charged for that. So I just brought it up and I told Dan, I said, I took this, I just cleaned all this stuff up and he was like, that's fine. Don't want to get him in trouble, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> trying to make the town look better. I mean, it's just cleaning up the town, so. It just, it, I, um, it, it would have been ideal if he came initially. Right. Right. First of all, you know, if people are randomly dumping on his property, that it, that is something that the select board is, is, you know, probably prepared to and equipped to help with, if at all possible. Um, I wouldn't characterize it as town waste. Um, if someone jumped on my property, it would be my obligation to, to remove it. And I would, I could avail myself of, um, remedies. They may not be perfect, but I would have them. Um, ideally Tom, as, as the fee was waived for you, that's, you know, that's really the easiest, um, mm -hmm. um, method. The town having to cut a check is, is awkward. Um, and, and I can see why in the past the select board hesitated to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know that we have to make a decision right now, but, um, yeah, I think, um, and I understand that Peter's, you know, we're all good citizens. He's a good citizen and he wanted to clear that up, which is great. Um, but it's just awkward to have to try to, to, to figure this out after the fact. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not clear. Is this actually town property or the gentleman's property? Where the it tires were located? It is an unclear situation. It was the right of way that goes through his property. Um, it doesn't. You know, that's, went in there to measure where the tires were placed, but there's some illegal dumping. So, but but it's own. It's his property upon which the town has a right of way, which it does not confer on the town any ownership of that property. Um, unless someone has a different characterization, but that was what was stated earlier in the meeting. It's private property. Is that I've got, can, I, can I, can I chime in on this? Sure. Um, Cause from the, uh, from the letter, it sounded like the tires themselves were blocking the actual road. And if the town owns the road, then it was on the town property. Right. And then is it, would it be amenable also to instead of cutting a check 
uh, offering a credit for the amount at the transfer station. That's a possibility. Yeah, Andy, yeah. could you reread the letter? I didn't take it that way, but that could have been it. And then I think that's a, you know a, a nice, a good suggestion. I, I said I wasn't going to make another comment, but I'm going to. I I used to walk the dog up there, and until he got away from me and almost got out on Route 100 chasing another dog. I don't know when Pete acquired that property, but those tires had been on there for some time. If that matters, I don't, I don't know how long he owned that, but somebody we. In the time we were walking on there, all of a sudden my wife said, that's really nice. Someone put a bunch of tires in here. So I don't know if that has any bearing, but okay. To the board, I removed 16 tires from the right of way of Jamaica Town Road number 62 in Rossonville. I wondered if the town of Jamaica would be willing to reimburse me for the disposal costs of $92, which I paid at the transfer station, Peter Andrews. Joel, I'll take another comment and then then we'll, yeah. Okay, um, does the town ever anticipate using that? Because otherwise it's a double-edged sword. I mean, if the town might want to go in there and they refuse to, to do this, then they're kind of giving up their right to go in there. I mean, if you're saying it's not a town road, then you have no right to it. Well, it is, it is a town road, um, whether or not the the tires were in the right of way or on the right of way or just off the bank somewhere. Um, I think. But I'd like, Peter, I mean, I'd like to clear this up. I, I'd like to make a proposal, just or like a um, a motion, to um, to cover the cost of these and offset this through a credit to Peter and make it clear that this is not a, a standard procedure. That anything of this nature should be brought before the board prior. Um, I'll second. I'll second that. Okay, I, 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 any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hold it. Any yes. abstentions? I'm sorry, Paul? Yeah, would you ask for discussion and then started voting before I go? Oh, 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 nope, sorry, sorry, sorry. Nope, go ahead. It's too late. Having said, by coming to the select board and saying, this will not be a precedence, it's nonetheless a precedence. Absolutely, by nature of the fact, yes. But that any further, um, anything like this in the future should be brought before the board prior. So it's, it is a precedent, but we'll state the fact that it's a one-time occurrence. Sure. We, we'll get it burned on it anyways, no matter what, but I think it's the right thing to do, and that's where I stood up. I agree with you, Greg. I think, it, I think it's the right thing. I mean, Peter does a lot for the town. And not to say, like somebody said earlier, not to say that a lot of people do a lot of right things for the town. Right. Uh, but we, we are, you know, an open thinking board and, and bring things to us and we'll evaluate and decide on, on things brought to the table. I'd like to you may think that we're showing that here today. We've got a lot of open discussions on the agenda. Um, not typically maybe the way that agendas are run, but I'd like to have the community involvement on a lot of stuff. So um, thank you on that. Um, the next item, number 15. We didn't vote. You, we didn't vote. Oh, yeah, oh I thought we did vote. Open on the table. <laughs> I thought we had voted and that's what Paul was calling us. Okay, so motion on the table. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. Okay, four supportive and one abstention. Thank you. So next item is the review of sign applications. Um, I know in the the in the past we've uh, we've had a sign ordinance, a new sign ordinance that was put on the books several years ago, almost two years now. Um, we've never had a sign ad, or, or signed administrator. We'd had we've been floating sign the signage approvals up to the board level, which has some built in. Um, you know, not not perfect because the board actually is is in the ordinance is the ones who kind of are the judiciary board also if there is a um you know variance needed to the sign or if there is a sign permit that's not approved then the applicant has the ability to push that to the board um but the upside of this right now is that john suhikian has i, I would like to nominate john as 
Jamaica's new signed administrator. Um, so thank you, John, has, has delved into reading through our sign ordinance, which is quite lengthy. And I think when we put it together, we were trying to make sure that it was something that didn't have to be revised every five years. Um, so I throw out with John's, with John's support that we nominate John as Jamaica's sign administrator. Second that. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> it's quite the stuff. honor. Yeah, for taking yeah. on all kinds of stuff. I you actually, know, I, 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 by the way, I a friend of mine is he sound, the sign administrator as part of his job in zoning in the town of Greenwich, Connecticut, in Connecticut. And he gets quite a bit of money for that job. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know, I know the sign administrator in the town of Wilmington, Wilmington too, and he is also the the zoning administrator and the health officer and all that and fully compensated yes um so do i've got um a second i guess i made the motion so tom second all any further comment convers uh comments all in favor say aye 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 aye, aye. any opposed i'll abstain Jessica. i'll abstain jessica is abstaining thank you um, thank you, John. And so thank that kind of moves that off of the agenda as far as review sign application. So John will have a sign application on his desk first thing in the morning. So can't there wait. Is one, and that's the reason why th this pushed up to the top. There um, we go. But it's pretty straightforward, so nothing to worry about. Paul, this real quickly. This mayor may be the best time to bring it to your attention, John. The uh, Muzzy's building has, uh, they were putting up several signs on both sides of the building having to do with <laughs> something, I'm not even sure what. And I mentioned it to them when they were doing it and they said, we just doing what we're told basically. But I think that might be looked into because there's big multi-feet multi signs on both two sides of that building today. Today? Today. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just put them up. I will help, I mean, I can help support you too on you know approaching people on this too, at least so that a lot of people aren't really clear what their sign sign ordinance is right. um it looks kind of cumbersome but it's really just to make sure that the details are covered um it is pretty straightforward and i think it makes sense for our village that we're just not allowing you know willy-nilly billboards and signs plastered all over the place so right it might it might be not a good idea to have something on our town website um so people can actually be linked to that um and maybe, and I can look at maybe an abbreviated version versus 16 pages, because I would imagine that the majority of people in the town of Jamaica absolutely have no idea that there is a town um, ordinance for signage. So, right. John, if you want to work with me on that, let me know. I can help yep. you. Yes, Thanks, so. Tom. Ha yeah, no I will do that. Sarah, is it already on the uh, website? It is. There... Yes, the sign ordinance is up on the website. Yes. Okay. But again, it's buried, so who sees it? Who knows what? Who, who knows it's there? So on and so forth. Sure. Okay. Thank you, John. And the next one, I th think this was inadvertently kept on the agenda from when I was cutting and pasting things. But I do not believe there is a, a new overweight permit. Is that correct, Terry? None. Yep. So on to the next one. Just more of a reminder that the the school budget vote. Um, the school budget was defeated at their last vote. So the next vote is on June 30th. So that's more of a reminder for everybody. Um, doesn't leave, I know Sarah's gonna be challenged because it doesn't leave time to really get the um, absentee ballots back out to people. Um, so we'll be working all together to try to facilitate an, an easy vote. We're here for you, Sarah. Uh, Greg, what was the, uh, what was the outcome uh, in terms of numbers? It was lost super by, close. That's all. Lost I by three votes, I think. The the town the lost Jamaica by three. Village school. Yeah, Jamaica Village School lost by three votes. The high school okay. passed. Okay. But they are going to re-vote both of them as together, even though the high school passed. Okay. So that that's it. And I know there's been a number of people in the meeting here, and Joel had brought up too. So um, now it's time for public public comment, public can concerns. I, can I say something right. real quick? Can go, you go ahead, can you update us on the, uh, I, I know I talked to you about the poison parsnip in town. Can you update us on what the town is doing? I know I cleaned up Water Street and tried to cut down as many as I could. 
Um, is the town addressing this at all? Because it seems to be some areas are really getting overgrown with it. And yeah, so actually the, the, the level of addressing it where there's not a plan in place to eradicate it or anything like that, but um, it had been brought up to open up the roadside mowing bids and, and put that out the bid earlier than, than normal or earlier than we've had. Um, Terry said that, you know, we've in the past, we've had a hard time getting people, uh, but we are preparing a, um, an RQ for roadside mowing. Keith on the, on the flip side is also doing an inventory of the roads that have problems, um, partly that they have poison parsnip problems, but also partly whether or not they need to be mowed. And so that we can have a little bit more refined mowing um, bid put out there. I don't have any, I mean, there's, I, don't, I mean, we, we should entertain the idea and there it hasn't been whether or not we call in some hazard mitigation squad to to address these. I know that's it's a concern in our town and in a lot of towns and a lot of road sites. Yeah, I mean, obviously Route 30 is tough. I mean, there's a lot of it on Route 30, but I'm just more concerned about, you know, town roads. In the village, especially. In the village or even up towards the state park and such. Um, I walked out there a couple of days ago. It looks like, I don't know if they went and cleaned it out because I didn't find any, but I know I was walking there a couple of days ago and there was a whole bunch. Uh, yeah, like I said, I cleaned out Water guys. Street on the on the guardrail here. I cleaned all that out. Um, there was maybe 20 or 30 plants there. Um, just trying to stay ahead of it because once it establishes, it's it's a, if you look if you go up Route 30 or Route 100, it's 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 just proliferates it's terribly. Right, and I know Keith was going to have um, you know Dennis go out there and and start working on some stuff too, and he's been doing the mowing in and around. So um, getting out there with the with the weed whacker, but I don't know where that's gone or if he's addressed it in town there. But Keith's aware of it too. I can circle back to him and, and just make sure it stays on the radar and maybe even look into whether we get some professional help, so to speak, in some areas where it's a major concern. Yeah, I mean, there's a big patch too at the end of Water Street by the bridge there. Oh, on the front side, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't right. really want to weed whack that either because no. the spat is the. It sprays all over the place. You got to yeah. slice it off, right? You got to. Yeah, got to get the root underneath and get, and then to pull the plants out and then put them in a bag and bake them. So they're going to seed almost now. Not yeah. Quite, not quite. Yeah, right. pretty close though. Yeah. Get the flowers off before they go to seed. That would be helpful in controlling it. Mm -hmm. That is an idea just to snip them off. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if, if Keith can get somebody out there and do the ones at least around the loop and down to the park. I mean, those are seem to be the key areas and there's definitely a lot of people in those areas. Right. Okay. Joel. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure about how to bring up this uh, situation with what happened on the bridge number 32, the Route 30 bridge. Uh, last Saturday, somebody uh, put up a protest there, which I thought was mostly um, very civil. And um, then there was some uncivil uh, occurrence about it and confrontation about it uh, with, with a local citizen and then with the sheriff's office. And um, I know that um, what's up there has a right to be there. Uh, the governor has reversed Jamaica policy that things like that, which are, I'm not Jamaica, Vermont policy, that things like that are legal as long as they're not destructive or uh, profane or um, derogatory. Um, I don't know the chain of events that caused somebody to come and wash the stuff off. Um, and, uh, it, and it was put back on the bridge, which I'm actually personally glad it was. And I'd like to know where we stand on all that. I think my, my thoughts, and I, I know I've talked to a number of people in town, um, the fact that, you know, the, the word you just used was, was perfect. I mean, it was very civil and, and, and uh, you know, poignant message that people were getting across. And that us, that we stand on the fact that, I mean, with the, with the, um, the state side of thing, as far as saying, as long as it's not 
destructive and it's not permanent and there's no profanity involved and that kind of thing, which is generally what this is, um, that there's no, there's no reason to step in the way. Um, people put chalk on the sidewalks all the time, kids playing on the street during, you know, other events and things like that. Um, the message is strong and it, and it's, but it's not, um, you know, it's not, it, it's not, um, there's, there's nothing wrong with the message for sure. I think as a board here too, and I'll, I'll state me, I mean, I think, um, well, I, I, anyways, yeah. So Paul. A couple of thoughts. One of which is that um, the, uh, yeah, it was peaceful and people were very friendly, except I had to drive around a flag that was sticking out into the northbound lane on 30. So there was some interference, but here's the other piece of it. There were people who were very upset about what was going on on the bridge. They were presumed to be politically motivated. They may or may not have been, but we've got people in this town spend a lot of time and energy in trying to beautify the town and trying to keep it look like a small Vermont town. That doesn't void this First Amendment. Excuse me, the First Amendment does not cover defacing property. You can speak anything, but you can't go around defacing property. Now we have to find a clip. Can you define the word deface, please? Can you please let me finish? We're not, we're gonna do one at a time here, thank you. And I'll, I'll call thank on people, thank you. My point is that we have people who are upset with having that bridge, um, whatever you wanna call it, defaced or artistically enhanced, doesn't matter. It's private property or public property. Free speech covers what you do with, that, with your mouth, but does not necessarily cover you defacing or covering another property. My point is, people in this town spend a lot of time and money, their own money, and energies, and we have a budget of, I think, 700 bucks, to keep the town looking halfway decent. This, I think, offended a lot of those people, at least some of the people I heard about. Michael, go ahead. Thanks. It's good that it offends a lot of people because if something's worth talking about, it's worth risking offense of, offending somebody and it's worth risk being the risk of being offended. And what I'd really like is somebody to define the word deface um, because, you know, that's, that's, uh, that, I don't like that language. Um, and so secondly, Systemic racism is what that is what that message is about, and it hurts everybody. And until it's a, until it's affecting every single person, then nothing's going to change in, around it. And so I'm frankly very, very, very pleased that people are offended by it. Yep. And although I'll take comments from everybody, this may be something. I mean, as as a as a board, we we may not make a statement, but each of us as an individual has our own expression of, of speech freedoms too. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll say that, I mean, because I, I, I mean, I, I support a lot of this, but I, as a board, um, we collectively may not have a decision to make here. So. We should remain apolitical. We should not, we apolitical, can't decide right. as a board. I've got my hand up. So, yes, Andy, go ahead. All right. I don't think as a select board member, I have any stand on any of this. Once the sheriff's department told me that it was fine to use chalk on, on the bridge, I got no problem with it. I'm not up on protesting laws or, pro, or I didn't know the governor reversed. Um, you can write on the walls or on the, on the bridge, on the Rick Huby Memorial Bridge, you can use it to write, uh, you know, Trump is a wanker on the other side. I don't know if somebody erased that. I'll tell you what, as a board member, I don't want to get into any. We personally, I have no stand on any of this. I, that's it. That's all I have to say. I, I'm, I'm all for whatever, but I don't have any opinion as a board member. As long as it's legal, I, I, I have no, uh, no, no opinion or, uh, would oppose that because it's legal. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that before. Now I do. So that's all I have to say. As a citizen, um, I can I can feel however I want. But as working with you guys on the board and and girl and and Jessica, 
I don't think it's any of our business as long as uh, no laws are being broken. And plus, it's a state bridge. You know, I, I don't even want to engage us into the conversation of taking a stand on this. I just think that uh, uh, that's none of our business, really, as board yeah, members. Just, yeah, I would just add um, Paul, to your earlier point. Free speech is not limited to verbal speech. Speech is a is a term of art. And, and Andy's point is well taken. It's if it's not, if it doesn't violate um, local or state law to write in chalk, which we know it doesn't, since kids use chalk for, you know, on on sidewalks all the time, um, and there's no profanity. Um, it doesn't it doesn't violate law. I think that your definition of of speech. I, I'm certainly not trying to narrow it down. What I'm saying is you can say what you wish to say and publish anything you want. When you start using other property and the people who spend the time and energy to keep that looking halfway decent got offended, then as, as Michael Zimmer says, his idea was to offend people. I'm offended by somebody whose ideal is to offend people. I think <laughs> town, we're trying to maintain a small little Vermont community and have people come in and try to use that as a chalkboard for their political views, regardless of how valuable they may be, I think is an offense to the town. I don't particularly uh, like it. I understand its legality. It's going to get washed away with the rain. That's not the question. The question is, I think that part of what's got a lot of people in this town who aren't showing up at the meeting, by the way, has to do with the fact that we're trying to keep this a small Vermont town, apolitical, live our lives without getting into defacing property to, for somebody's political agenda. I wish you a lot of good luck with that. Yeah, and I think, I think I'd like to limit the conversation and, and not because all these are, are valid points in some ways. I think the expression of free speech is, is the strongest thing we have going here. And we, we can't be so naive to think that there are these innate or inner, or I don't, not even the right, but systemic, um, things built into our society and that if we think that we're immune to them, we're, 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 you know, very much mistaken. Um, I think that everyone here has expressed their individual opinions. You know, it's, I strongly support this too. And it's not defacing, um, you know, it's not literally, you're not etching it in there. You're not burning it on there, anything like that. Um, but as a board, we, um, I, I've heard it from the board members that we, um, we'll stay apolitical. I mean, we're, we're here to guard the, the, the rights of people and make sure that um, the town or the townspeople are adhering to the laws and this is within the realm of the laws. Um, if I can say, I think that we, as a board, we support legal protest, of course. I mean, that, that's part of the country. That's what this country's based on. So as long as, like, like what Greg was saying, as long as the laws are not being broken, then yeah, then, then things are fine. And we're not gonna get in the way of that. Yeah, absolutely. Can I say one more thing? It's Sorry, my I... opinion also, because a lot of this has been, been like sort of uh, lumped under the umbrella of a political issue. No one wants to take a political stance on this. It's, it's my opinion, and, and I think that's what we're all talking about now, we're all sharing right now is our opinions. It's my opinion that this is not a political issue that this is a cultural issue. And if in fact you, you really desire um, to have this be a you know, small town, you know, old school Vermont feel with those old archaic values and things like that, well, I mean, this is a cultural issue. This isn't a political issue. This isn't political. There's nothing political that we're talking about. This is a, this is a cultural issue. And let me also say, that it's because of that bridge right there that the governor reversed the policy on um, on essentially um, what we're talking about. It's because of that very bridge right over there. I, I, do, I know nothing about a governor reversing a policy. Can you explain or give us a citation where that's coming from? No. I, um, I, I, I spoke with uh, the PR director for VTrans last week, um, who, um, when she uh, understood what the message on the bridge was that was being asked to be cleaned off, she got in touch with the governor, spoke with his administration and his um, legal team, who all assured her that they will be changing the policy regarding 
um, temporary uh, art or some other, other such on a, you know, if it's like, like it was said, like Joel just said, if it's not um, insightful or profane. Apparently it's insightful. It's inciting the people who would like to see a clean bridge. So those people are incited by the fact that we protest police brutality and the murder of black individuals. The select board has no opinion on on the protesting. The, the question We've already discussed that. I don't well, want to then, get into yeah. it's none of our business what we're talking about. The legality is what we're talking about. The legality is what we're talking about of a, of what I, in my opinion of a cultural issue. And so yeah, it's legal for chalk to be on the bridge as long as it's not profane. We know as that. long as the message so itself is not support. profane. We're, we're supporting legal. that and the, the peaceful portion of it and the, the civil, and, and I think that the demonstration has been you know, very, very profound and um, there's no laws being broken and we hope it to stay that way. And each of us as an individual um, are allowed to express our own opinion. So I, just, I thank you. Just one little point of information. Um, I spoke to people at VTrans who said in fact, that while VTrans maintains the bridge, the bridge is actually the property of the town. Oh, then we do have a re right to keep it clean and neat and pristine. What does that have to do with the protest? It has to do, the protest isn't the issue. The protest is what kind of, um, what kind of face, uh, I don't, I'm gonna call it defacing, however you wanna call it. If you've got people, you started the conversation with people who were upset. If people are upset because they put time and energy into making this town look halfway decent, and then we get somebody who comes in and defaces this particular first shot coming from the north, first thing you see coming in to Jamaica is this, I don't think you can get upset with them being upset. Why is it only one side? Gets I'm not upset with anybody being upset. I'm upset with people interfering with, the, with people's right of speech. You know, and and yes, and I don't, I don't have any objection to you being upset or anybody being upset. That's part of the democratic process. But there is a, there's an issue here that people have very strong feelings, including myself, and they're expressing their opinion in a, in a democratic and civilized way. And yes, that opinion may upset people, but it's a legal wow. precedent. It's, it's also, by precedent. the way, it's legal to burn the American flag. It's, it's legal to do a lot of these things. As long as it's on your property and it's your voice. But when you start, I mean, when we were kids, we used to be taught it's perfectly okay to swing your arm. Your right to swing your arm ends where my nose begins. And so when you do this. We're talking about free speech, Paul. We're not talking about assault, oh which actually did happen on the bridge that day. There was someone assaulted on the bridge that day if you want to talk about that. I think this is all valid. And I think Paul... I, I know there's differing opinions on this. Some of the people are, are upset about what's being protested and others are upset about the, the look and feel of it. But as a board, there's no, no laws that have been broken. So um, as a board, we are not making a stand. Each of us individuals can make a stand as we feel. Um, and you know, that, that's, a, that's how I think as a board. I mean, so this is a in our super- capacity as individuals, that's yeah. fine. Yep. We're all as individuals entitled to our right of free speech, but I agree wholeheartedly as a board, we are agnostic and we are, we support protecting civil liberties and, and, and the rights uh, the as people, the, the free speech yeah. in, in the constitution. And <laughs> there is nothing that prevents individuals on whether it's a state owned, a city owned, village owned bridge to assemble and engage in free speech, including non illegal activities like writing in chalk. I understand that some individuals may not like that, but there is nothing for the board to intervene with respect to that activity. Thank you. Do we as a board have a right to do we have as a board have a right to represent the citizenry that don't like what you are putting on the fence? I'm no, you, you don't have a right to, uh, to get involved sake. with the content of the message unless it's profane or illegal. If you it's illegal or profane, and if, you, and if you're on the wrong side of this argument, because there's only one right side of this, and if you're on the wrong side of it, let's talk about it. Let's stand on the bridge and talk about it all you want, but you, you can't. You can't, can you can't, you can't, stand, the way, you can't stand in the way of the message. 
Oh. The message is not the point. The point is that there are people who have a different message than you, perhaps. They're not allowed to talk, but the people who write it on the bridge, they, they are allowed to talk. Give your rest. They can write, they're not they can write their message talk. on the bridge, too, as long as it's not profane. That. They can write their message on the oh. bridge. Okay. You got a mute button there, Greg? Let me finish. What I'm saying to you is we have a responsibility as a board nice. to support the people who are putting time and energy into keeping the town looking halfway decent. We give them up. We have a responsibility right. to support all of the people oh, in the town, hang not just the ones you like. Hang this on a minute, Michael. What, give Paul his, his time. Thank you. There is a component made our point three times. for flying. What the hell's going on? There's a component of our citizenry who are trying to say, we'd like to keep this town looking relatively pristine. Maybe that's a fly in the eye. But the idea, the idea that somebody can come in, do what they've done without any, any response at all, without us at least supporting the people we've been giving money to to keep it halfway decent and to keep the police. I don't think those people should be shouted down. Now, nobody else is here, so it's just me. I don't care about the message. One thing, I'm guessing that I'm the only guy in this board that got beaten up a racial uh, riot one time in the 60s. So I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to represent everybody in town. But I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the people who are making sounds that we don't want our town looking like this. That's, I think, a reasonable position. That, too, is free speech. That's and welcome. And that, I welcome those people to come to this meeting, too. Um, I haven't heard from them. I, I fully hear your Paul. You're right to, to to support those that are thinking that this is, you know, destructive. Um, there's other places in town, obviously, that people would feel they like or don't like the look of it. Um, but we now need to say that this is um, we're we're not going to interfere in this action what, that's being taken by these by the protest on the bridge, and. We, we have nothing to stand on on our ability to do it and and we support that it's constructive and when it comes that when it turns into hopefully never but when it does then we may need to take an issue with it uh, we're mr. mr chair i believe a, a point of order is that we've made our stand or are taking note made our point of view known three times that the select board is i love uh Jessica's uh, analogy or her word of agnostic on this. So that's, I think, I think that we could discuss this outside of here as citizens, but we're, we're stepping, we're getting a little out of bounds here as a board engaging in, you know, m more than what the select board uh, is, uh, their, their take on this. And we've been just going around and around. Yeah, we've gone there's around. One board that, there's one member that's, a little more, a little more has another view, but as the, the board, we're, we're not going to do, we have no opinion on this really. Right. And, and I would say too, if those people who are beautifying the town or want the town to be beautiful, want to come to the meeting, like Michael did, then have them come to the meeting and then we can have a discussion about it. But if they're not here, you know, like I say, we're here to discuss things. We're not going to, there's no decision here per se. Um, but we're willing to talk to everybody and, and hear all the different points of view. But if they're not here, you know. I don't think we need to do that as a select board on either side. I think we're here to conduct the town's business. Right. Exactly. And one side, once there is no law, I found that there's no law being violated, then it's none of my business as a board member. And that's right. the fourth time I've said that tonight. So that's all, that's all I have to say. I, you know, I'm not, I'm pretty conscientious of what's going on. So I, I don't need to, yeah. I don't need to tell you what kind of man I am as a select board member. You know, I, I've said enough, so. Yeah, thank you, know. you. Thank you, Joel and Michael. Thank you very much for bringing that forward. Um, I think the, the conversation is, 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 is well worth having the conversation. Thank you, board. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hot topic, and let's we'll, let's keep it on the front burner. So, um, any other public concern? I know those. Um, I did put down there executive session if if needed. Um, I don't know of any that's needed. I think I'm gonna. That is something I've kind of picked up from some other meetings that that's a, a perennial or a, a 
whatever um, on the agenda of every week just in case we need it but um, I know of nothing that we need it for unless another board member has something I move by adjourn I second the motion second Jessica all in favor of adjourning aye aye, aye. 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 thank you thank no. you Joel thank you Michael Chris yeah. Sarah thank you. thanks Michael for coming appreciate that Tom I meant to say it earlier awesome thank you you're welcome.